So that is backup. And those are three other apps that come with iCloud. But we couldn't stop there. <laughs> and so we have a final three apps that are amazing. The most inventive part of iCloud, I think. And uh, I'd love to tell you about them. The first one is documents in the cloud. So if I'm on my iPad and I create a Pages document, right? I create a Pages document, and it automatically uploads it and stores it in the cloud when I close that document, completely automatically. And it then pushes it to all the devices that I have pages on. So I can get the document between my devices. And we have put that into pages, numbers, and Keynote. As a matter of fact, the versions we just released last week have this in there. And to demonstrate what this is like with iWork, I'd love to invite Roger Rosner, who's our VP of iWork up, to give us a quick demo. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's take a look at how iWork and iCloud will work together. Let's say you're working on a keynote presentation on your iPad making a beautiful presentation with all those awesome keynote graphic effects and animations. But you're away from home. You didn't bring your iPad with you. And you run into somebody who wants to see your presentation. Well, the good news is, last week, we shipped iWork for iPhone. And even better, for anybody who bought uh, an iWork app for your iPad, you can download that app for your iPhone at no additional charge. So let's fire up Keynote on this phone. This is the first time we've run it here, so it's going to say hi. And then it's going to say, do you want to use iCloud? We say yes. And immediately, it sees all your keynote presentations that you've been working on in the cloud and starts to download them in the background to your iPhone. So I'll open this one we were just looking at. And as you can see, it's all there. I even remembered what slide we were looking at. And if I want to, I can just hit play, play it right on my iPhone. And I put exactly zero effort into getting that file over here. Pretty neat. <laughs> of course, all the iWork apps use iCloud. So let's take a look at Pages. And you know, imagine you're out and you, uh, you're inspired to make some changes to a document you've been working on. So I'm going to move this graphic over here. Maybe I just took a photograph that I think would be great to spruce up my cover page. So I'll go to my camera roll, insert my graphic, use alignment guides to place it, and I'm done. And I, I stick the phone in my pocket, and I forget about it. And uh, in the background, iCloud is grabbing all those changes and then immediately pushing them back down to my iPad. So when I get home, pick up the iPad, fire up pages, you can see in the upper left, my document thumbnail's already been updated. And there are all my edits, absolutely no effort on my part. And that is how iWork works with iCloud. I think you're going to like it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Roger. And Documents in the Cloud really completes our iOS document storage story, too. In other words, a lot of us have been working for 10 years to get rid of the file system so the user didn't have to worry about it. When you try to teach, teach somebody how to use a Mac, the easiest of all computers to use, Everything's going along fine until you hit the file system, and then the difficulty is staggering for most people. So we've made it on the iOS devices to where you don't ever have to think about it. The app manages the presentation of its own documents, just like mail manages the presentation of its own messages. But the piece that we weren't finished with 
was how do we move those documents around to different devices? And documents in the cloud solves that problem for us. Apps can store documents in iCloud. iCloud pushes those documents to a user's devices automatically. The documents update on all devices when changed on any device. And we are releasing <laughs> APIs for all of you. So it's really easy to tie your apps into iCloud's storage system. And again, you can have complex documents, apps like Pages, or we've got another storage facility for key value data. So as an example, if you've got an app that just tracks stocks, you can just update the key value pairs, and we'll store that in the cloud as well. So documents and key value data works across all iOS devices and Macs and PCs, too. So we think this is going to be pretty big, and that is documents in the cloud. This next one is maybe my favorite one. Um, and it's called PhotoStream. And it's going to bring the cloud to photos. How many times have we taken photos on our iPhone, maybe of our kids in the afternoon, and wanted, when we got home, to share them on an iPad and have to go through the process of moving them over? Wouldn't it be great if by the time I got home they were already there on the iPad? Well, that's what PhotoStream is going to do for us across all of our devices. So again, I take photos on any device, puts it in the camera roll, and that will be automatically uploaded to the cloud where it's stored and automatically downloaded to all my other devices, including, in this case, a Mac. And so I've got my photos on my iP iPad just waiting for me when I get home. Now, in addition, I can import photos. Right into iPhoto as an example on the Mac. It'll upload those to the cloud and do exactly the same thing with them by pushing them down to all my other devices. So it's apps that I, it's photos that I take or photos that I import. And we've built this right into the apps. I, I hope you've seen that as we've gone through this. We've built this right into the app, so there's nothing new to learn. So PhotoStream on the iPad's photo app, we built it right in, right next to albums. We have a button called PhotoStream. You push it, and you're looking at the PhotoStream. It's that simple. There's not a separate app that you have to go learn. It's right there in your Photos app. It's right there in your Photos app on your iPhone. It's just right there with all your other albums. There you go, PhotoStream. On the Mac, on the Mac, we built it right into iPhoto. And so it's right there on the side, your photo stream. And on a PC, they don't have a Photos app. So we use the Pictures folder, right? In addition to that, we've even built it in to Apple TV. So Apple TV. Apple TV talks directly over the internet directly to, to the photo stream servers. Doesn't even go through your PC. Talks directly to the photo stream servers so you can watch the photos right on your Apple TV. So one of the problems we faced was that we'll, photos are large and will use up all the memory on your devices. They're also large. They'll consume vast amounts of storage in our server farms. So we've come up with a great scheme. We're going to store photos on your devices. We're going to store the last 1,000 photos. Right? We'll store the last 1,000. And any photos you want to keep permanently, just move them into an album, and they'll stay forever. But they'll be parading by you, the last 1,000 photographs. On your Mac or PC, because we have more storage, we'll store all of them. 
You can get rid of them by just deleting them. But we'll store all of them. And on the server, we'll store them for 30 days, which is more than enough time for all your devices to connect and automatically download those photos. So we think we've got a great system here that's going to move our photos around among all of our devices, even Apple TV, so that when I take a photo anywhere, I can view it on all my other devices. We think this is going to be really exciting. To demonstrate this, I've asked Eddie Q, our VP of Internet Services, to come on up and give us a demo of PhotoStream. Thanks, Steve. Yep. So I want to take some photos to start with. Now, I love cars, and I happen to have brought one of my favorite ones with me here today. And here it is. And we're going to go to our, my iPhone and launch the camera app. Lightning McQueen is looking good. I love the headlights. And now these photos are on my iPhone, but let's go look at my iPad. Now we've built PhotoStream right into the Photos app. So right next to albums is PhotoStream, and there is the pictures I just took. I didn't have to learn anything new at all. And if I want to save them permanently on my iPad, I can just select them and move them to an existing album or even create a new album. That's it. Now, these photos aren't just on my iPad. They're on all of my devices. Let's move over to the Mac, where I've got iPhoto running. And we've built, again, PhotoStream right in. And there are the photos I just took. So, so now when I take a photo on one of my devices, they automatically appear on all of my devices without having to do anything at all. It's that simple, and that's PhotoStream. Thanks, buddy. That was great. OK. Isn't that awesome? So photos you take or import upload to iCloud. iCloud pushes them to all your devices, works over Wi-Fi. It's, iCloud stores each photo for 30 days, which is plenty enough time for all the devices to be connected. Devices store the last 1,000 photos. And again, you can just drag them to an album. They stay forever. And Macs and PCs store all photos. So we're really, really pleased with PhotoStream. We think you're going to like it a lot. Last but not least is iTunes in the cloud. You know, it's the same old story, right? About I buy something on my iPhone, right? Well, and, and it's not on my other devices. I grab my iPod and I go to listen to that song I bought yesterday on my iPhone, it ain't there. Well, the first thing we've done, again, is for the songs you've already bought, we've added a purchase button that shows you your entire purchase history of all the iTunes songs you bought on any device. You can look at it by all songs or recent songs, or you can look at it by artist. So I'm going to pick Bob Dylan here. And I could download any of these albums that I've bought on iTunes to this device just by pushing that cloud download button. Or I could go in to one of them and just download whatever songs I want to this device. So anything I've bought. I can now download to any of my devices at no additional charge, which is great. This is the first time we've seen this in the music industry. No charge for multiple downloads to different devices. And for the future, 
I flick one switch to on.